Today I have for you a simple routine which will absolutely transform your hamstring mobility. If you struggle with tight hamstrings, the techniques and the methods that I've got for you in this video are exactly what you need. This is a beginner friendly follow along routine and if you give it a go three times per week, I guarantee you will be shocked at what progress you can achieve in just one month. Don't forget I have hundreds more follow along mobility, flexibility and yoga classes in my online studio. Check out the description for more info on that. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start in a tabletop position. If you wanna bring your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees, we're gonna start with some movements of the spine and the pelvis. So as you inhale, think of lifting your chest to look forwards as you press your sit bones to the sky, like you're pushing your bum upward. And then as you exhale, you're rounding the spine, broadening the shoulder blades and tucking your tailbone. And then keep going. So inhale, lifting the chest, dropping the belly, sit bones up towards the sky. And as you exhale, you're rounding, shoulder blades are broad across your back. Good. Now, as you keep moving, the reason that I really want us to start here is this movement of the hips is super important for hamstring mobility. When you take the inhale and you lift the chest and sit bones go up, this is the movement that you want to be doing when you're trying to stretch your hamstrings. It's a movement I'm going to ask you to do a lot through class. So again, as you inhale, you're rolling the sit bones up. This is known as anterior pelvic tilt. And then the opposite, which is posterior, which is not what we want to do when we're trying to stretch our hamstrings, is the tucked tailbone. So let's just experience that one more time. Inhale, sit bones to the sky, tilt the hips forward. Think of lifting the chest. And then exhale is the opposite as you round the spine and push the floor away. Good, and then come back towards neutral where the spine is just nice and flat. And then the right leg, I want you to step out behind you, straight leg onto the ball of the foot. Think of pressing your weight backwards. So you're trying to stretch through your right calf here. Maybe you've got it already and you can stay. Or if you wanna like add a little extra load, lift the left knee and really push your weight a little further back. Find a variation that works for you and just take one more breath in. And then softly release it and switch it over. Left leg, extend out behind you. Push your body weight back. Press the heel to the back of the mat. Option to lift the knee to really shift a little bit more weight into that back foot. Lovely, and then rest that down. Two knees back to the mat. I want you now to draw yourself up to standing bringing your feet to be about hip distance apart. We're now going to work into the nervous system. Bring your hands towards your hips and then keeping your torso nice and long and upright, I want you to hinge at the hips, bum pushes backwards, chest reach forwards until you feel a stretch in your hamstring. So this will be different for everyone, but there's a soft bend in the knees until you feel that stretch. Now resting your hands onto your thighs or if you want to, you can rest your hands onto a table or a sofa. From there, I want you to think of letting one leg straighten as the other knee is bent now lift your gaze, look forwards. And then as you switch the legs, the chin drops to the chest, so you're looking at your thighs. And then switch the legs, look forwards. One leg is straight, doesn't matter which. As the chin goes to the chest, the other one is straight. Good, do a couple more, nice and slow and controlled. One leg works towards straight. As the other one bends, you're switching the gaze as you rotate, good. Now, wherever you are, I want you to pause looking forwards, whatever the legs are in. Now stay looking forwards, switch the legs. So now the other leg is bent and the other leg is straight and now keep going. So chin towards chest, switch the leg, re-bend, looking forwards. Take a few more times, just makes us evenly work into both legs. Good, one more time. And then final one. Lovely, using that nice straight spine, come all the way up to stand. Now see if you have a, a tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, or a little massage ball. If you don't have anything like this, you could use a water bottle or a foam roller, it's going under our foot. If you have none of those, you can sit down and just massage the soles of your feet. But take whatever object it is that you've got, and I want you just to take a few moments to roll the sole of your right foot. You can start on whatever side. Making sure you're going sort of forwards and backwards along the length of your foot that you're getting a little bit of the inner arch of the foot, you're getting the middle of the arch of the foot, you're getting the outer arch, and then also get the toes around the ball of the foot. Try not to let it get away, try not to excite, excite your dog. 
and then allow yourself to do exactly the same on the other side. Just as before, getting the center line of the foot, getting the outer arch, getting the inner arch. You can put a fair bit of pressure here, getting the ball of the foot, getting the toes, giving it a good old squish. Nice, you can then pop that to one side. Stay standing onto your mat and bring your weight over into your left foot and your right knee, you're then gonna hug in towards your chest. Come to hold either back of thigh or front of shin and give it a nice squish in towards your body. Try not to let the leg go wide, keep it right in front of the body and just use your arms to pull the leg in a few times, get it as close to your body as you can. Now, as you let go, let your arms do whatever it is they need to for balance. We're going to do little pulses of this leg. Now we're going to do 20. So just lift 19, 18, 17, 16. Keep going. 12, 11, 10. Oh, it burns. 9, 8, 7, 6. Keep going. Nearly there. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, Whoa. straighten out the leg, put it down. Hopefully you can feel that in the front of your right hip. Let's do the same to the left leg. So knee curls in, come to give it a little squish, a little squeeze, keep it right in front of the body. Try not to let it go wide. Use the strength of the arms to squish it in close and then let go. Arms wherever it is that's necessary. And then 20 little pulses, lift. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, it's meant to be hard, 2, and 1, lovely. Place that down, just stretch it out nice and long in the front of the hip. Now keeping your right foot as it is onto the mat, I want you just to step your left foot a little bit backwards and onto the ball of the foot, we call this a B stance. Keeping your hands onto your hips now, similarly with the, uh, the, the shift forward to the elephant walk, I want you to push your hips back, chest goes forward, just a little bend in the knee, not much, until you feel a stretch, and then rise your way up. We're doing five of those. Push the bum back, spine stays long, rising up for three, really press your sit bones, find that anterior pelvic tilt, and then one final one, hinging, and rising up. Now from there, we're going to find some dynamic stretching. So I want you to take a little step forwards on your left foot, left arm reaches forwards for you then to kick your own hand, little rock back. Step forwards, kick, little rock back. For three, we're doing five in total, four, and five. Lovely, and then back at the back of the mat, let's do that onto the left. So left foot stays as it is, back of the, the right foot steps back just slightly out the way. Hinge at the hips, push the bum back, chest forwards, feel the stretch rising up. For two, five in total. Only go as far as you need to to feel the stretch. Like I said, it'll look different for everybody. Four, and five, good. And then from there, you're going to take that little step forwards with the right foot. The right arm is gonna go out in front of you. For your left foot, then kick your hand and rock back. Kick as high as you can for five in total. Two more. Last one. Good, wonderful. We're going to do that one more time on each side. Repetition is really, really valuable for your hamstring mobility. Standing onto your right foot, push the bum back, chest forwards as you come up. Five in total. Find that stretch. Maybe you're finding that you can go a little bit further than you could to begin with. Anterior pelvic tilt, sit bones to the sky. And last one. Good. Take a little step forwards on the left leg. The left arm is out in front of you. You're then going to try and kick that hand. Get as high as you can. Maybe lift the hand. Challenge yourself. Three, four, five. Wonderful. And then to the left foot. Right foot is just off behind you. Hinge at those hips for five. Anteriorly tilt, four, three, two, good, and final one. And then let that right foot step just in front of you, right hand is out, and let's go for five, four, three, 
Really explode that leg up there. Two. Oh, I can't count. Is it one more? And one. Wonderful. From there, take a little walk forwards towards the top of your mat. With the right foot, take a big long stride all the way back and lower the back knee down to the floor so that your front foot and your back knee are about as far away from each other as you can manage, but the front knee is still roughly over the front ankle. Now from here, I want you to think of chest to be nice and long. Drive your front hip down towards your front heel. And then nothing really that's connected to the mat needs to move, but you're going to shift yourself back, keep your belly close to your thigh, flex the toes, sit as low back as you can, and then walk yourself back forwards. And then again, shifting back. Now push your heel down into the floor, walk yourself back. Good. Again, a couple more times. Coming back forwards. Shifting back, root the back of the heel down. Good, last one. Lovely. From there, step yourself in all the way up so you can switch sides. Left foot, big stride back. Drop the back knee down so that you're about as far as you possibly can. You could always bring your hands up onto blocks if you need a little bit more space to work within your hips. And then from there, shifting back. Keep belly close to thigh, toes flex. Walk yourself back forwards, drive hips down. Drive the heel down into the floor. Shifting forwards, good. Keep on moving. One way, then the other. Let's take a last couple. Wonderful. And then again, step yourself all the way back up to stand. This time I want you to take a nice wide stance. So turn yourself to face sideways and allow your feet to be much wider than your hips, but your toes are pointing sort of forwards and in front of you. And then in that same kind of motion of body staying nice and long, hips hinging, uh, pelvis anteriorly tilting, I want you to push your bum back, send your chest forwards into that hinging motion and rise your way up. If you'd like to make it harder, you're going to reach your arms forwards as you do so, feel the stretch, rising your way up. Good, keep going. Three, we're going for eight. Four, long through the spine, roll those sit bones up, five, six, seven, good, final one, sit bones to the sky, find that stretch and then rise your way all the way up. Lovely. From there, I want you to again hinge forwards. You might want to use blocks if you need to, because I want the hands to come to blocks or the floor so that your spine is kind of parallel to the mat. So elevate the hands onto blocks if you need to, to do so. With these feet, I now want you to turn your toes ever so slightly outwards. They're pointing towards the corners of the mat. You're then going to walk your, not walk, leave your hands where they are, but bend into your right knee as you sink down towards the right side. Feel a stretch in the inner left thigh, all the way up and all the way over to the other side. Your hands don't have to stay, um, you know, solid to the floor. You can move them to wherever is comfortable, but your torso, your spine is trying to stay roughly parallel to the mat as you move from one side to the other. Knee drives in the direction of the toes. Readjust the toes if you need to. Lovely. As you move side to side, maybe you can find the hips can drop a little lower. Good. One more each side. Lovely. And then as you come back towards neutral, one way or another, come down onto your bum, facing forwards towards the top of the mat. Now, widening your feet to be wider than your hips, maybe a little wider than your mat. And I want you to try and keep your torso upright here and facing forward. So try not to twist your torso. Let your hands support you for the time being. And then let the knees, it's probably a familiar movement to you, the 90-90. Let, the let the knees move over towards the left to drop down, but don't twist with them. Stay facing forwards all the way up and over to the other side. Keep the chest facing forwards. We're really focusing on the internal rotation. So this is now your right leg internally rotating and then over towards the left. Internal rotation is super, super valuable for helping your hamstring mobility, helps you find that anterior pelvic tilt, which I've been yabbering on about. Good, couple more times.
Lovely. And then drawing your feet back onto the mat. I want this time you to come all the way down onto your backs and we're still going to work with internal rotation. Bring your knees to be on top of your hips and bring your thighs, squeeze your thighs completely together. Your shins are roughly parallel with the floor. From there, keeping your knees together and your thighs together, I want you just to widen your feet as far away from each other as they can. Pause and hold it and then draw them back towards each other. Same again, widen, hold it, back together. We're going to do eight repetitions. So this is three, keep the knees together, four, five, go on, really separate them, six, maybe they don't go as far as you wish they did, seven, but that's okay, just do your best, and final, eight. Lovely, and then feet back down onto the floor. I want you to step your feet a little bit further away from your bum and your toes are flexed towards the sky. Keep your right leg as it is, but now curl your left knee in towards your chest. Your left leg is now not gonna do anything. Think about shuffling your shoulder blades slightly towards each other underneath you and your elbows compress down into the floor. Now drive down into that right heel to lift your hips, tuck your tailbone, squeeze your bum, and then back down to the mat. And we'll do that for eight, so lifting up, and down. Three, little pause at the top. Four, five, six, seven, good, last one, eight. Let the hips go down, put the left heel back down, return to the floor, draw the right knee in, let's do the same on the other side. Push the elbows in for support, lifting up for one, Two, tuck the tailbone. Three, squeeze your bum. Four. Five. Six. Seven, lovely, last one, number eight. Good, and then let your two heels go to the mat. One final little movement, uh, well, strengthening movement. Step your feet, both feet now, are even further away than they were. So your legs kind of feel like they're almost moving towards straight. This time we're gonna use both heels, but the fact that our feet are further away is gonna be harder for our hamstrings. So last eight repetitions, both heels press down, lift up, squeeze your bum, and rest down. For two, three, Four. This is the last bit of effort, I promise. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Lovely. Hopefully you can feel that in your hamstrings. Let your knees curl in and then just softly, one way or another, find your way up to seated. So now send your right leg out in front of you, sole of the left foot towards the inner of the thigh and sit your body tall. If you can't sit upright in this position, sit your bum onto a block or a, a bolster or a couple of cushions so that you can sit upright. Flex the toes back towards you and think of breathing in to create as much, much length in your body as you can. And as you exhale, think of belly towards thigh. Maybe you can hold the foot if that's within your range. Otherwise your hands go to the floor or to hold your calf. If you are on the tighter side and here is already stretching, let your hands go behind you to help you sit tall and just to push your body that ever so slight bit forward. So again, this will look different for everyone. It's not about how it looks. You're feeling that stretch in the back of the right thigh. Keep chasing the feeling of a stretch, particularly if you have found a point where it's starting to sort of melt away. Can you lengthen your chest forwards towards your toes? Body compresses towards the thigh. Lovely, and then release. Switching over, left leg goes out in front, sole of the foot towards the inner of the left thigh. Create that feeling of length. Pull your rib cage up and away from your hips, the arms help, and then exhale, allow your body to fold forwards. You could always use a strap as well if you want to be able to reach the foot and the mobility is not quite there yet. Push the heel away from you. Flex the toes back towards you. Root the back of the left thigh down to the floor. Good. 
just try to relax, even though there's effort, face is soft. Great, as you rise up, we'll now send both legs out. Again, feet to be flexed, sitting nice and tall onto your sit bones like a capital L shape. Take a nice deep breath in, create as much length as you can. Keep thinking of going upwards as you then go forwards to reach hold of whatever it is that you can reach hold of. Using a strap is a great idea, but ever so slightly think of rolling your legs a little bit inward towards each other. Don't let the toes fall outward. If anything, bring them towards each other. Use that internal rotation. Nice, and then release from that. And then without using your hands, step your legs as wide as you can manage into a big V shape, but don't pick your leg up and move it wider. I want you to only take it as far as you can take it. Same as before, you're upright with the spine, you might be onto a block. Uh, you can always use your hands here and think of pushing forwards. I want you to flex your feet, inhale, create the length, maybe you're adding the arms. And as, you're ex as you exhale, you're going forwards to place the hands to the floor. That could mean here could mean there. It could mean that your hands are still behind you, but the toes are flexing back towards the body, the thighs are pressing down, and you're keeping the body long. Well, whatever it is it looks like, it does not matter. Feel the stretch. Keep lengthening the spine. And then rise your way all the way back up. We'll do those stretches one more time, but with a subtle difference, we're going to point our feet. So right leg to extend in front of you. Sit yourself tall, point the foot away from you. Breathe in to create length. As you breathe out, folding forwards, just as before, the only difference is the foot is pointing. Again, think of the thigh ever so slightly rolling inward. and then releasing, same to the left side. Bend the other leg in, sit yourself tall, point that toe, thigh rolls in, breathe in, create length. Breathing out, folding forwards. Lovely, and then release, final two stretches. Two legs out in front of you. Again, not toes out, if anything toes in towards each other, point them. Breathe in, create your length. Breathe out as you fold forwards. Wonderful, sit yourself up tall. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit calmer in the body, a little bit more relaxed. Send those legs out wide without using your hands. Point to the toes. Remind your body that you're safe, you're fine. So that's the sort of secret to stretching. Breathe in, create the length. Breathe out, find your fault. Same options as before, doesn't need to look like mine. Maybe hands are down, maybe forearms are down, maybe hands are behind you to help you sit upright. Good, let's take one more big breath in. And then draw yourself all the way in. Pull those legs back together. Well done, my friends, that's hamstring mobility all done.
Good job, my friends. I hope you surprised yourself with just how far forward you could fold at the end there. If you're really keen to transform your hamstring mobility, go and check out this video next where you can learn a secret flexibility hack.